Communication is fundamental. But what if you are faced with a machine that only speaks electrical? How can you represent textual information to break barriers and transcend cultural boundaries? Due to the role in representing and manipulating text, strings hold significant importance in computer science. As proper human-computer interaction enables an elegant user experience and an effective coding session. So how do computers understand text? How is it used in action? And can it include all languages? A string is a data structure. It is implemented by an array of characters. And going back to the basics, representing letters using bits requires what is called an encoding scheme, where each character is represented by a byte. ASCII was one of the first encoding schemes, founded by a committee of industry experts, most notably Bob Beamer, often called the father of ASCII for his foundational proposal and significant contributions to its design. Back in the 1960s, we had teleprinters, we had simple devices that you type a key and it sends some numbers and the same letter comes out the other side. But there needs to be a standard, so in the mid-1960s, uh, America at least, settled on ASCII, which is the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And it's a, a seven-bit binary system, so each letter you type in gets converted into seven binary numbers and sent over the wire. ASCII specifies a table. Translating 95 human readable characters, it includes the letters A through Z, both in upper and lower case. The numbers 0 through 9, with a handful of punctuation marks and control characters like space or a new line. But ASCII is limited, because what about other languages? The ones that don't even use the alphabet? What if we want to write a French letter? a ticket in Japanese, or a novel in Arabic. One byte is not enough. Dozens of languages are in active use on this planet, and so multi-language documents in a globalized world are needed, especially with the arrival of the World Wide Web. For example, the Chinese government via Founder Electronics curated the JB18030, a double byte encoding scheme covering traditional and simplified Chinese. It is China's official standard for encoding Chinese characters and is constantly updated to align with the latest standards. At this point, the computer industry needed one encoding standard to unify them all. It was enough to cover all languages of all corners of the globe. The standard is Unicode, a table with over a million code points that can be used for all sorts of letters and symbols. It maps the abstract code point number to a sequence of zeros and ones that are stored and processed. We can say that 65 stands for A and 66 for B, or 9731 stands for the snowman symbol. There are many versions. UTF-32 encodes 4 bytes per character meaning it can represent over 1.1 million characters. But sometimes 32 is overkill. To save space, they prompted for variable length encoding, like UTF-16 or the standard UTF-8. The web settled for the latter, as it is a brilliant design of backward compatibility with ASCII. A will still stand for 65, B for 66, and so on. At first glance, strings are only useful for interactivity and data storage, which is fundamental and an amazing milestone. But any database operation adds or retrieves text. Even the language is text-based, enabling seamless CRUD operations for developers. Debugging is more intuitive. Error messages and exceptions reveal code flaws and monitor performance, hence reducing overhead and improving code quality. And when machine learning and AI came around, natural language processing was the industry's next challenge. Training these models needed an immense amount of training data, which is a form of textual information. And so formats like JSON and CSV paved the way for strings. 
making data processing and manipulation much easier for science. Despite the versatility, compromises had to be made. In some languages, strings are immutable. Once created, they cannot be changed. Frequent edits create new copies, hence wasting heap space by allocating new memory and copying characters repeatedly. And if done inside loops, time complexity becomes quadratic. Allowing mutability by using Java Spring Builders is a better approach. No new allocations each time, characters are appended to the same buffer, and one final string is created at the end, similar to template literals in JavaScript. Moreover, strings are not ideal for sensitive data. Because of immutability, when old data and passwords get deleted, modified copies of those credentials persist in RAM, increasing the exposure window until garbage collection reclaims it. However, they are great for fixed values like tokens, constants, or configuration. Choosing the right approach and analyzing trade-offs in string programming is essential, and a great example is in Doom 1993. Let's say we want to draw text on screen. The initial state is the string parameter pointing to memory containing the character array. Now ch is the pointer to the letter h. Cx and Cy are the current xy positions. In the first iteration, C contains the letter H, and then points to the next letter I. We pass the two conditions where H is treated as 72 in ASCII. Moving to the next line, we see that H is already in uppercase, and we subtract it from HU font start, a base value for calculating the offsets of individual characters. Let us assume it is 33 in ASCII, and we get 39. We pass the if condition, and we ensure the width value is in the correct byte order. We retrieve it and check if it fits the overall screen width. Finally, we draw H at the specific 1020 coordinates. We create extra space for the next letter by adding our width to the X position. We repeat the same steps for the letter I, until we point to the null terminator, where the if condition is satisfied and we exit the loop. Text is just bytes in memory. Pointers move to the next character, and the null terminator tells the computer where the string ends, and of course with the help of encoding schemes like ASCII and Unicode. Understanding and encoding strings is a critical task, we may take computer text for granted, but under the hood, it is all zeros and ones with a clever manipulation. They serve as the raw material for the sophisticated structures that build digital masterpieces. Thank you so much for watching, until next time.